Hello grade 11s. Welcome to this practical lesson on the effect of temperature on the pressure of a gas. Now let's start with some history. In 1702, Guillaume Amonton used an air thermometer to show that the pressure exerted by an enclosed gas changed as the temperature changed. He measured the pressure of the enclosed gas when the container was placed into liquids at different temperatures. Thanks, Nelly. Another scientist called Gay Lussac also did work on the relationship between gas temperature and pressure. So this relationship is sometimes called Gay Lussac's law. We'll join Nelly again as she talks us through a practical which Mr. Mashapa and his learners do in their lab in just a moment. We will see how they answer the focus question. How does the temperature of a gas affect its pressure? So they will change the temperature of a trapped gas and measure the resulting pressure of this gas. For this test to be fair, they will keep the volume and amount of gas they use constant. In another lesson, we analyze their results and explain them in terms of kinetic theory. Right now, let's join Mr. Mashapa in his lab. This is called the Jolly Bulb. As you can see that now it is fitted to the pressure gauge and what happens is we have some very dry air inside here. We have to look at as we increase the temperature and as we decrease the temperature, what happens to the pressure gauge and remember the volume of the gas is now kept constant. So that is how this basically works. Now we are going to use dry ice. I hope you know what is dry ice. What's the, the street name? Steam ice. You normally call it steam ice, right? The most scientific name would be dry ice, which is carbon dioxide. Right. Well, I think you know this instrument, yes. this apparatus. What do we call this? Thermometer. This is called the thermometer, which is used to? We measure the temperature. Oh, we measure the temperature. I hope you should understand that you are not going to, to be able to record the temperature reading because according to this thermometer, it can only measure the lowest temperature up to minus 10 degrees Celsius. And obviously, in this case, you are going to get far less than minus 10 degrees Celsius. So just to give you an idea what happens, let us add some dry ice in here. And then we're going to add some more. The main aim here is just to make this jolly bulb to be surrounded by this dry ice so as to affect the temperature inside. What's happening to the pressure cage? And up. The pressure is decreasing, sir. The pressure is decreasing? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, remember, when we started, the temperature was about 19 degrees Celsius. Yes. Now, let's try to check how is our temperature doing now. Could we just pull this? It's just below minus 10. There is minus 10. Look at the mercury where, it, where it's running. Can you see it? Yes, sir. No. And because of that, now, we cannot be able to get the correct reading of the temperature. Right now that we saw that now, if we place the jolly pulp into dry ice, the pressure decreases as well as the temperature decreases. Now, we are, we are now going to take recordings whereby we'll be looking at the temperature of ice. What would be the temperature when the jolly pulp is in ice? And what would be the corresponding pressure? Then from there, the next reading would be if we use ordinary tap water, then what would be the temperature indicated by the thermometer and also what would be the reading on the pressure gauge. And then we try to get warmer water and then lastly towards uh, a boiling point water so that we should get our readings, about four to five readings, and then we have to come up with our results. Is that clear? Yes. Let's start with ice. I'll have to add some ice cubes right at the bottom and then from there we are going to add 
some ice just around the jolly pulp. Matsuriso just fetch us some tap water. That would be enough. Thank you. Just add some water here. You remember, as I stay here, I'm trying to make the temperature to be even. And at the same time, remember, the jolly pulp must be submerged. You don't have to have any part of the jolly pulp being outside of this ice because we are recording the results according to this ice. Right. I think now we are done. We can now take our reading. Tabi Singh, are you able to, to see? Not clearly. Not clearly. Yes. My name is still one, one, de one degree Celsius. Celsius. It's about one degree Celsius. Yes. All right. Right, Tabi, so could you just write the readings on the board for us? Right, now let us look at the pressure reading. Now, what we have here is the zero mark, and from the zero mark we know that the standard pressure is 100 kilopascals. So we simply have to add the reading that we get here to 100 kilopascals. Right, now can you tell me what is the reading from the pressure gauge? 106.5. 106.5 kilopascals. So we are done with the ice. Now we get to ordinary tap water. Right. Can you just add some water there, Matsiriso? Now our next reading would be the temperature of tap water and then we have to look also at the pressure for now let's just give it some time so that we should get exactly where it settles now we can take the reading of the temperature 15, 15. degrees 15 degrees that's tap water, 15 degrees Celsius. And what about the pressure? 111. 111 kilopascals. Right. Then the next reading would be we have to add some hot water just to increase the temperature of the tap water. Can we get some boiling water, Cadello? Just mix the two. The same procedure is taken. It gives us 31 degrees Celsius. 31 degrees. There we have it, 31 degrees Celsius. And what about the pressure? 116. 116. 116. Okay, then we need to get another readings. Can just add the water in here. All right, I think that's enough. Same procedure thermometer as well as the jolly pulp. And then I want you to get the readings. Has, has it stopped rising? It stopped. Yes. OK. 80, 80 degrees. 80 degrees. Yes. Then let's check on the pressure reading. 133. 133. All right. Your temperature would be along here, and your pressure would be along this way. Go back into your groups, and then from there, you plot the graphs according to the information that we got there from the experiments. You may move back to your groups now.
as the learners try to plot their graphs, why don't you use the same data and plot a graph of your own? Remember, when plotting graphs, finding the right scale is half the battle. See whether some of the learners' questions and Mr. Mashapa's answers can give you important clues about how to do this. Right now, remember, we start with our maximum reading of temperature. That would be 100, followed by 50, then 0, you go down towards your left. You just go down, minus 50, Minus 100, you don't have to stop at zero. If you have a question, please make me aware. Where is your zero? Yeah. And then zero, the y-axis meets with the x-axis at which point? There, there is your y-axis then. Uh, so on the y-axis, can we use uh, 50 intervals? Intervals of 50. Yes. Right, well, we have to look at our maximum number there, which is? 133. 133. Yes, now, we can take a scale of, let's check here, 50, uh, 25, try 25. Okay. 25, 50. Right. You see, from zero up to here, that gives us 25, right? Yes. Now, how many blocks do we have from here to here? Ten. Ten of them. Now, we want to know from here to here, it's how many. So, you divide this 25 by 10. So, which means from here to here is? From here to here is? How much? No, no. Look. What we have, we said that now from year to year, it's 25, yes. right? So which means from year? 2,5. Right, it's 2,5. Yes. Plus another 2,5? 5. 5. Plus another 2,5? 7,5. Plus another 2,5? 10. Plus another 2,5? 12,5. So which means for each and every little block, you have 2,5. Now, whatever reading that you want, you simply have to say, okay, right, fine. If this is 50, say maybe you want 52. Then we'll be saying that now is 50 and then 52,5. So we just go somewhere there. So how did you do? Does your graph also look something like this? From the data collected during the experiment, the learners plotted a straight line graph. However, this graph does not pass through the origin. What do you think the shape of this graph tells us about the relationship between pressure and temperature? Do the learners' graphs show that pressure is directly proportional to temperature or not? Let's see what the learners have to say. But actually, we got a straight line graph. And but a straight line curve indicates that the volume of a gas is constant. I think that it's not directly proportional. If it was directly proportional, the pressure divided by the temperature would have been would have given us a constant factor. But the gradient must cut through the origin to be an uh, also, also, yeah, she uh, is uh, the gradient must cut through the origin to can give us a direct proportion. Extend your graph all the way to zero kilopascals. What would the temperature need to be to cause this pressure? Let's rejoin the students. If I have to predict for my graph, I found that the temperature is 200 and minus 270 Celsius. Okay, mine is about minus 274 or 3 degrees Celsius. Oh, mine is about 285 degrees Celsius. So we have to come to a point, okay? Okay, we must say that our conclusion is between okay. uh, two, minus 270 to, to minus 300. What interesting observations. Thank you, Mr. Mashapa and your learners, and also to Nelly. But we haven't finished with this data yet. 
we still need to understand the relationship between temperature and pressure. Why does this graph give a straight line, which suggests direct proportion, but it doesn't cut the origin? So the relationship can't be direct proportion. And what is the significance of the temperature which would cause zero pressure? The learners read this off their graphs as about 270 degrees Celsius. In another lesson, we answer these questions. So don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. Also, remember the task video and the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.